Hi everyone, this is Khan Denk here, and today we're going to talk about When Supreme Came to Bucha, one of the films in the 13th EU Human Rights Film Days program. And one of the directors of the film, Marcus Lenz, is here with us today. Hi, Marcus. Welcome. Hi, Khan. Nice to have me here. <laughs> Thank you for being our guest today. Unfortunately, the co-director of the film, Mila Tasheva, couldn't be here with us today for this interview. Uh, but we're so glad to have you here. So, uh, When Supreme Came to Bucha is a very striking documentary about Russia's attempt to invade Ukraine, as we know. And the film shows us the daily life in the city of Bucha, just after the retreat of the Russian army from the district. And I would like to start by asking how you and Mila came together for this project and how did the idea of making this documentary come about? Well, you need to know that Mila is a Ukrainian citizen and I'm German, but I know Mila since many, many years. And uh, when this full scale invasion started, Mila was actually living in Berlin for a while. And uh, she decided, I think on the third day of the full scale invasion, to go to Ukraine. So she was actually really going opposite direction of all, all the refugees trying to get out. And she was get, going into Kiev, which is her hometown. And she, Mila is um, now a film director, but she has a long history of being a photographer, an artistic photographer. Um, so. She went there, um, I was in constant contact with her and uh, I was a bit, I mean, not a bit, I was very, very worried that, you know, she's in Kiev, she might get encircled oh, and so on. And uh, then we all know that uh, the Russian army was kind of stopped very close to uh, Kiev in uh, the city of Irpin, which is a neighbor city of Butcher and Miller was photographing there. So some of these very famous photographs that we all know from the newspapers, it's like the, the destroyed bridge of Irpin and there's like hundreds of refugees hiding under the bridge, trying to escape the city and having this only like one wooden stick of, to cross, you know, this is, maybe you remember this, this, uh, this is photographs that Miller did. And um, and then, you know, she called me all the time saying like, you know, come here, come here, help me, let's make a film. And uh, I need to confess that I was a bit afraid to go. Um, but I felt, and instead I was, I was trying to raise money, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a documentarist, but I'm also a feature film director. So I was trying to call my famous actor friends, you know, to form groups and, you know, like, like, you know, to, to, to get some money. And we, we did this in the beginning and um, were like collecting money for medicine that we sent over. But then I felt like, look, the, the I mean, the best thing that I can do is actually uh, telling stories and making movies. So um, when the war crimes of Bucha were discovered, uh, Mila was one of the first persons entering the city. She was seeing all these bodies on the street, all the deaths on the street, which we didn't include in the movie. Um, and there was the moment I felt I, I need to go as well. You know, it was a time when, when uh, there was also a lot of Russian trolls telling this is a lie, you know, it didn't really happen, you know, but I heard from Mila clearly, you know, that it happened and uh, what she saw. So I decided to go and then we started to make a film. Yeah, you felt that responsibility as a filmmaker to document all of these real facts. Mm -hmm. So uh, was there a any particular reason uh, why you choose to just the butcher because we know a lot of districts in ukraine uh, shared the same fate but uh, at that time i think uh, as you mentioned just uh, is it a clear choice at the first point for to make a film about butcher only the butcher but not another city well, look, Mila has a very personal connection to Bucha, you know, as, as, as she's from Kiev, she, you know, that, that's, that's basically a destination where you go as a, 
for the holidays, you know, for the weekend, mm. to have a good time, you know, when you live in Kiev. When she was a child, you know, that was she went to to Butcher with her mom to to spend weekends there. Um, it was, you know, somehow that we started in Butcher making this. Butcher was the first very very big war crime that we got to know about. Others, unfortunately, followed, and. We feel it doesn't make sense to, you know, we didn't want to make a film that is following explosions. We didn't want to make a film that is following one event after the other, but we were yeah. interested in, you know, what on the long terms it does to the people. You know, what 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 happens when the armies are gone, what, what happens when, you know, the journalists are gone, um, what happens when the fighting is over? And we did when spring came to Bucho. Um, and we actually, what you don't know is that we continue until today to follow the same protagonist, you know? So with the end of the film that you yeah. just draw, it's not the end of our work, but we decided that we wanna go and really follow them for another two years. So we filmed a lot until now and, uh, and still you feel a very, very strong, and not really good influence of the war on the lives of people. And, and the war is really influencing the everyday life of a person for many, many years after it happened. Yeah. Uh, actually, this point, uh, I just want to ask you, this documentary is about an ongoing war, but the tone, the atmosphere of the film is somehow not that dark. You know, we've seen some people, of course, that. There's a terrible trauma we we just witnessing. Uh, we've seen people find uh, some bodies of their neighbors, their loved ones, and at the other uh, hand, we've seen a little girl just making paintings and trying to, um, I don't know, maybe uh, run away that fact. Uh, I don't know how could she, but so um, how did you come up with this choice? It's not a very dark film. Yeah, we didn't choose it. We found it. You know, you found it. It's not. It's not that we went there and we wanted to do something. You know, I mean, I do films like that that I want to do something. You know, but this film is really done. It's really found. You know, there's nothing made up here. There's nothing. We come with an idea. We want to do something. We really found it, and um, it's. I mean, it's really interesting. A friend of us, uh, Katya Pretovskaya, who is a famous writer, she wrote also about the same time. She she wrote the sentence, "I have never seen so much love in my life." Yeah, you know, and indeed it was like this for me as well. You know, I I went there and I was I was expecting to see only darkness, yeah. and suffering. You know, but what I found is really an enormous uh, solidarity. And I found, you know, like um, really this kind of coming together under the pressure from the outside, really Ukrainian, at that time, Ukrainian people came together and uh, neighbors were helping each other. We, we see in the film, we see uh, these volunteers, you know, they are not the only ones, this big group of volunteers who clean this building, you know. Um, these people come every day for three hours by bus. Then they do the, the their volunteer work, and in the evening they go back for another three hours. You know, and they come every day. And there were thousands and thousands of these people. Or we see Olga, you know, who, who was suffering herself strongly from 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 the attack, uh, going to the neighbor who lost her husband and helping her, you know, and and yeah. offering her friendship and so. On. Um, I felt that very very strong, and that's maybe some kind of hope for humanity you know that, that uh, you know even in in the in this darkness you you can react in a way that actually some some hope is there on the on the horizon well uh i think we're out of our time nearly so just before we finish maybe we can talk about the um as a documentary filmmaker or as a filmmaker mm -hmm. what do you think about the responsibility of cinema in showing the the real world traumas and also hope what do you think about it yeah i mean there's a big responsibility of cinema to tell the truth you know yeah of course um um and 
I think, um, you know, for myself, and sometimes you can think, oh, all, all this doesn't make sense, you know, because there's, there's thousands of books and thousands of films and everything is told and it didn't change the world. No, mm. yeah, there's still a war, still all this shit is going on. <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, I don't know. I don't know how it is for you. For me, myself, I, I can say that my life is strongly influenced by the stories that I have seen in the movies or the books that I read. You know, I was like really, you know, I I, I had the possibility to to meet people from all around the world, thanks to the work of other directors, you know? And I think, me, myself, I've, I've formed some tolerance, you know, curiosity about, you know, people who are strangers, you know? I got to know strangers that I maybe wouldn't need, meet in my real life, you know? Mm -hmm. okay. You know, they have the same hopes, the same fears like me, you know, they laugh the same way you know it's actually quite similar and i think this you know um reduction of fear for those who feel strangers to us that's a maybe. big opportunity of cinema maybe maybe we're just not showing by cinema maybe just we're sharing and saving in our memories all mm -hmm. of these yeah maybe. you're right thank you for <laughs> being with us today and thank you, thank you for this interview um i hope someday we meet again yeah i hope so i hope so <laughs> next time in person huh? okay next time in person I wonderful hope that. 